Could you turn with me please to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I want to talk to you today about a subject that's near and dear to the heart of God, and that's you. One of my goals is, my, well, my major goal is, as, as it relates to uh, what I do here at this church, is to help you to excel in your walk with God, to excel in, in, in your Christianity walk. That's, that's what, I'm not here to network for business. I'm not here to make friends. Uh, you know, all that's good. Well, that's not, that's not the goal. But my goal, when I get up here, when I, when I study, my aim is what can I do? What can I give the people that's going to help them excel in their walk with God and, and have a spirit of excellence in their walk with God, in their Christianity? That's my goal. No, no other reason. I, I don't need. I don't. There's a whole lot. I don't need. I don't need popularity. I don't need. I don't need none of that. But my goal is to help you. That's why I, I was so excited about the the young man. And then I, I, there's another young man. He he's coming back here. He uh he he just he's getting stationed back here. I just found out yesterday, and he went in the Air Force, and now he he getting ready to graduate officer school. He went in as a airman. Now he, he, he went to officer school, and, and this boy, I mean, from the time he was like 10, he, I knew there was something, he, he, he was drawn to, not than me, but he was drawn to the Word of God, and he used to pray. Y'all remember when we'd have the, uh, the prayer request on the envelope? He used to pray every day, every Sunday, for his daddy to come to know Jesus, his daddy that wasn't in his life. Every Sunday, and I would see him. I said, "Hey, he said, I'm believing my daddy." Well, guess what? His daddy and his mama got remarried, <laughs> and he's saved. He's walking with God, the daddy, all of. Them. I mean, don't you tell me. See, that's why you know when I pre I don't know I don't know who gonna take this and run with. I don't know. I don't know who in this congregation. <laughs> I don't know who's in there. I, I, I don't even, I don't, I don't pay no mind to, you know, you see a lot of stuff, but I like, you never know what's going on in people's heart. Come on, and here's a young dude, but he, he was one of them, it was, he had something. And so he wrote me and he said, Pastor, you ain't going to believe it, because he was believing to be, a, be an officer. And so he wrote me it was several months ago and said, you ain't going to believe it, Pastor, everything. He said, you told me to write it down and lift my power and what I'm, what I'm believing God to do. Come on. And he wrote them all down. He said everything. He said this last one just came past. Glory to God. So he he get ready to graduate off of the school, and they're gonna send him back here. Woo! Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. Amen. Tell me what God can't do. He's able. <laughs> yeah. So so we just gotta believe God. And so part of what I do and what I want to do, I want to stir your heart to believe God, Amen. and and to to unhook, unhook and unplug from the wisdom of the world and where you believe everything you see on TV, everything you read, when you, when you, when the book becomes your reality. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to try to hold my mule a little bit today and not let it get loose. Because what I want to talk about is dear, dear in my heart. Let's begin reading in John chapter 17. Verse 1, real simple message that I'll give you my title in a minute. Verse 1, Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. So how many of you know Jesus came that we would have eternal life? Okay, now, watch this, because a lot of folks don't know what eternal life is. Jesus is getting ready to define it here. Verse 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you. This is eternal life, that they may know you. The only true God and Jesus, whom you have sent. 
What is eternal life? You have the average Christian, they don't know that. They think, see, a lot of people think eternal life is quantity. Like, we're going to live forever, you know, with Jesus. The truth of the matter is, we're going to live forever, ever, whether we accept Jesus or not. There's an eternity. <laughs> we can live it with Jesus or we live it with the devil. So it's not quantity, but it is a quality of life that he came to give us. He came to give us a whole new way of thinking, a whole new way of believing, a whole new way of relating one to another, a whole new way of, of acting, a whole new way of, 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 of talking. Uh, it's called eternal life. It's, it's the life. It's the life of God. It's a, it's a divine energy from God. Now, why is that important? Well, just stay with me. But, but he, said, he said, but I'm giving you this eternal life that you may know him. So I want to talk to you today about your, your relationship with God because it's all about relationship. Yeah. He said, I came. He, he said, that they may know you. So when Jesus came, one of the things he did was he came to give us back what Adam lost. Give a little history. What, what Adam lost. Y'all remember what was Adam and God doing? Hanging out, right? And they, 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 you know, in the cool of the day. God don't even like that Arizona weather. Huh? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, let me stop. But, but in the cool of the day, and they were fellowshipping. Some people think that, that, that your, your, your soul purpose, now, you know, we don't have soul winning, that kind of thing. But some people think their soul purpose that God has for them is to win souls. What souls was Adam and Eve witnessing to? Well, God just want to bless you. What did they need? They had it perfect. They had no need. They had nobody else. God, like, no, no, no. I, I, I want to relate. I made you so I can love on you and so you can voluntarily. And so that you can voluntarily love me back. God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want what you can do for him. He wants you. He wants your heart. And what we majored on was forgiveness of sin. Well, well, well forgiveness of sin is, is there because it blocks us from receiving and walking in our relationship. But he wants you. He, want, he wants you more than anything. He wants your heart more than anything you can do and achieve for him. Yeah. So Jesus said, no, I can't. They may have eternal life. What's eternal life? That they may know you. That they may have a viable, powerful, awesome relationship with the creator of the heavens and earth. So Jesus said, no, I want to I want to bring you back to that union that Adam had and Back to that union and, 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 and relationship that they had. Back to, that's my whole purpose. Jesus said, listen, so that y'all can enjoy what I had before I came down here. That you may know God, not know about him. Know him. See, this is the book, the Bible is, is not a book about God. It's a book from God. To you, so you can know what he feels about you, what he thinks about you, so you can can you can understand what he'll say he'll do for you, and 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 how he wants you to relate to him, and how he wants you to keep your heel on the devil's head. Yes. Amen. Yeah, about relationship. So that's what I want to talk about today. I mean, sometimes some things get lost. Sometimes we major on minor things. And we don't major on the major thing. And Jesus majored on the major things. And no, no, no I, I came to bring y'all back. So, <laughs> uh, this is eternal life that they may know you. Isn't that something? Yes. Now, the word know, if you read it even in the Old Testament and New Testament, it, 
it's more than just intellectual knowledge. It's, it's about relationship. And in Genesis 4, it says that Adam knew Eve and they bore, and she, well, not they bore, she bore a son, uh, Cain. And then down in verse 17, it said Cain knew his wife and she bore uh, Enoch. So, so we're talking about an intimacy. An intimacy. And so when Jesus said that, he's like, no, God wants intimacy, not a sidebar relationship. Right. Intimacy. Daniel said, they who know their God. Didn't he say it? Shall be what? Strong and what else? And do exploits. They that know their God. Not those who know about their God. Those who have an intimacy. Boy, okay. Those who have intim intimate relationship with God, they know him. He knows where you hurt and you're able to talk to him about boy, I tell him the other day, I you know something coming, I said, Lord, I really don't I really don't want to do that. I ain't lying. But well, he know everything. But I said, I, I I don't want to do that. I just don't. So could you like hook me up? I don't want to do that. Y'all talk to him like that? We got an intimate relationship. I talk to him all the time. But but I want to see they that know their God. Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 32, you shall know the truth. And what's going to set you free? The truth, the truth what? That you, know. that you know, that you're intimate with. That, that truth is going to set you free. It, it, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to know it though. I got to have working relationship with truth. Not just head knowledge, but an experience with truth. Because Jesus said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word and God is one. So if I, I cannot have intimacy with God if, I'm not, if that word is not a priority in my life. How are you going to know him? He gave you a book for you to know him and relate to him. But I can't know him if the Bible, if the word of God is not. It, it, it's, it's because the word, once it gets inside of you, it, it, the Bible. Oh, I got so much I want to say. Once that word get inside of you, all you got to do is get it in there. The Bible said it will produce. And then you will bear fruit. Just like Eve bore Cain. See, so, so the enemy wants to keep us away from the Bible. Like they just say, if you don't want somebody to get it, hide it in a book. And so now they say that about Christians. If you don't want to get it, hide it in a Bible because you know, it's 160 characters, all they're going to read. And so, and so this relationship thing, God is like, see, I'm, I'm so tired of people uh, reducing me down to, to the, the norms and the, the values of today. No, I need, I want intimacy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Jesus said one time, he said, y'all, he said, you, you know, you said, let's, let's read this scripture. I got this on here. Um, uh... Oh, I'm way out of order. But no, let's go to Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 7, 21. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. For many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. Uh-huh. And cast out demons in your name. Well, and done many wonders in your name. And then he said, I will declare to them, I never what? You know about me. You, you did things for me. You even told folks about me. I don't know you. We don't have a relationship. We don't have a relationship. And so I want to challenge you today. What's your relationship? Because see, you can't get intimacy just bumping into God every now and then. <laughs> yeah, no. He said, I never knew you. I want to know you. I don't just want you to be on the team. I want to know you individually. 
I want to know you because I want to do some exploits in you and through you. But what's most important is my relationship. I'm not, you know, yes, I'll bless you, I'll do that. But, but see, the reason why you really want to get to know me is because when you know me, you will know some stuff that you just didn't even think were possible. Because intimacy, you learn some secrets that other folks don't know. Come on, talk to me. And then you talk to him about stuff, you wouldn't talk to anybody else. Why well, talk to somebody that can't help you out? Okay, now, I want you to go to, uh, go to Revelation chapter 4. Thank you. So this intimacy is, is what salvation is all about. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation chapter 4, look at this. I'm reading out of the King James Version because the other version didn't use these words. It said, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created how many things? All things. And for thy pleasure they are and were what? Created. For his what? Pleasure. pleasure. So the original purpose of all creation was, was to give God pleasure. He wanted somebody to love. Yeah. That's what he wants. He wants somebody to love. He wants somebody to love him back voluntarily. He wants to, think about it. Um, he he don't want me to go all through my whole day and never even acknowledge him. He like, I raised you up off the sick bed and now you act like I don't even exist. I want, I want, listen, I, I, there's nothing, he said, no good thing will I what? But he said, I just want, I just want intimacy with you. I just want to love you. And it's amazing. Those of you that have parents that, uh, or, or you are a parent, you know, when your child just ignores you, but they come around on payday. <laughs> hey, ma. How you doing? You look nice today. <laughs> and because you, you know, you're, you're compassionate, you're like, okay, well, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, um, accommodate certain kinds of people. But your heart of hearts, you're like, you know what? It would be nice for you to just sometimes, unprovoked, for you to say, hey, is there anything I can do for you today? Sometimes you have to ask God, God, is, is this anything you want, you'd like me to do for you today? Is there anybody you want me to go talk to today? I know this is not a, a stirring message, <laughs> but it'll stir heaven in your behalf because sometimes we forget that God wants a relationship with me. He wants relationship more than anything else. He wants relationship. I'm created for his pleasure. God takes pleasure in me. Well, Pastor, I'm not perfect. Well, he didn't actually be perfect. He just wants you to love him. Okay. Now, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. I'm reading out the Amplified because I want you to see this because I'm, I'm going to get ready to shift gears. Thank you, Father. This is what it's all about, knowing God. I say, this is what it's all about, knowing God. See, if you try to live the Christian life, I'll wait till you. This is, this is so important. If you try to live the Christian life without having a relationship with God, you're going to be disappointed. You're probably going to be a mean person. You're probably, you're probably going to be uh, frustrated, maybe even miserable. Living a Christian life without God is impossible. But we try to, we try to you know, and then we, we, we're good for six weeks, and then, then all of a sudden, and see, see, because, see, the intimacy with God, this is what I'm about to read, it produces the power to do certain things, and you, it's not a struggle. But if I'm trying to live this Christian life without intimacy, it's, 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 it's hard. And then I start blaming folk. I start being so critical. I start saying, well, you are my problem. I'm this way because of this. I'm this way because of them. I'm this way because of how I was raised. We start blaming everybody. When God said no. See, he said, if you, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will. Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I'll in no wise cast out. And he said this, whoever loves me, I will love him and the Father will love him and we'll make our bowl with him. He's going to live with us. 
You ever have anybody live in your house that's a strong personality? All of a sudden, you know, they start turning labels around. You open the drawer and all the labels turn around. See, they make a difference is what I'm trying to say. They start making a difference in the house. Like, wow, what was this? They start putting a touch on the house. But God said, you let me move in. I will put a touch on your heart. I'll put a touch on your life. You won't be so irritable. You won't be so touchy. You won't be so worried about what are folks saying about me. I'm, t- I'm so tired of that. I don't even know what to do. And, you know, we were teaching about unity the other day. About, and Paul was saying in Galatians 5, he said, people, y'all, bat, y'all biting one another, devouring one another. See, you can't, you can't do that when you're intimate with God. The people that do that kind of stuff, they don't have an intimacy with God. They may have a form of godliness, but no power. You know, I I was thinking how, you know, I'm surprised at myself because now I'm like, golly, I can't believe I really changed. I'm really a nice guy now. (laughs) Really, man, I'm like, God, I'm I'm like compassionate. Before I'd be like, forget you, whatever's gone. Now I'm like, oh. I'm serious. I, I, I don't know what happened to me. But really, I mean, really, I'm, the compassion is scary. I'm like, I'm like a sucker, man. You give me a good story. I just, well, you don't try it. <laughs> don't try it, though, because I, I get y'all got the heads up. But, but my point is, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, I mean, we got so much peace. I, I'm like, I'm like, dog, this is where it's supposed to be. This is the way it's supposed to be. So Pastor, you, you ain't got no problem. Oh, I got you. I got, you. I, I got plenty of problems. But when you get intimacy with God, he, said, he gives you a peace that passes all understanding. And he gives you hope that things are going to change. It's not always. I tell myself all the time. It's not always going to be like this. I tell myself all the time, this is just temporary. I'm going to show you something in a minute. But no, no. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about this intimacy with God, man, is, is he, he wants to do something. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Whew, I'm sorry. I'm getting out of control. Verse in the Amplified, it says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be what? Strong in the Lord. No, the next one. Be be yeah, my bad. Be empowered. Watch this through your union with Him. Where's the power coming from? Yeah. My union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. What that strength with boundless might provides. My God. When you begin to experience your relationship with him, he'll start doing things inside of you. See, everybody in here know there's some things inside of you that you've been able to shield from coming out. And people think if people really knew how, how you were inside, they wouldn't even be your friend. And me either. You'd be like, I don't like him. But, but my point is that God will start doing stuff inside of you. Where? Inside of you. And that's the way God works. He worked from the inside out and so and if he if he's able to do things inside of you it's just a matter of time for the outside things to change people are trying to change themselves it's that called behavior modification what i'm talking about is called trans formation where you were looking this way you were like a butterfly or a crop what's that thing caterpillar oh ugly furry caterpillar and then you start you start transforming and your shell you start (laughs) I don't know how they do that but they start total something that never existed before something that never existed I'm not talking about good for a season I'm talking about something that never ever existed that's what God did. He said, my relationship with you, you need my power. I will transform you. I will empower you. Something will start working on the inside that will start showing up on the outside. So how's your relationship with him? How's your building? You can't build a relationship with somebody you don't, you don't spend time with. I mean, you can say all kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love him. I, I get that. I know this is a challenging word, but this is where we are because, listen, we got a devil that's not playing games. Just the fact that you go to church and he said, well, I'll let him go to church. But long as I just got to keep him from believing this stuff. Mm. 
Yeah. Knowing God, that's the answer to all your dilemmas. It's the answer to improving and upgrading your life, your marriage, your family, your finances, your health. It's, it's, this is the answer to upgrading your life. God. <laughs> the devil gets up. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to see right now. I'm not going to be long on this one. Let's go to... Uh, I want, to share, I want to share something I shared on Wednesday night. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, please. Thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. Knowing God. I was talking to a sister yesterday, and she told me, yeah, we, my church challenged us to go on a 30-day a fast uh, from social media. And she said, my God, I didn't had no idea. I was so addicted to that thing. And she said, I, that was, she said, that was several months ago. I never went back. And she said, I got so much more peace in my life. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. My, my son sent me an article or video, and he talked about, and, and I think the name of it is, if, if you had read this before you went on Facebook, you never would have gone on Facebook. Right. Mm. It's a, uh, y'all look it up. I ain't going to talk about it, but don't look it up now. I'm talking. <laughs> but you need to, because and if you be honest with yourself, you, Come on. Come on what my phone? Give me a phone. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm getting all off. <laughs> if you be honest with yourself, just check yourself. Just check yourself. How many times? Hey man, how you doing? Yeah, you fine. I'm good too, man. You going out to the? You going to the movies? I mean, ain't nothing, nothing buzzing and I'm beeping, but you're looking. <laughs> Why? What you looking for? What you looking for? <laughs> what you looking for? Yeah, <laughs> and you sit there, and 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 you know, you 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 trying to you trying to eat dinner, and and, and ain't nothing happening. I'm beeping, but but you got to look. Yep. You addicted. Yep. <laughs> no, and it's a distraction. Yep. And what it's systematically doing is, and so when you come to church, and I preach longer than twenty minutes, God, dog. When he gonna when he gonna sit down? <laughs> God, Lee, he got to talk that long because because you used to, to ten minutes and you can pause you can't pause me up here but you, <laughs> but 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 just knowing I mean just just having it in your pocket just knowing it's in your pocket and you trying to, you in a place where you know no cell phone please tell you something, you're like. <sighs> And you go to the movies? You ever go to the movies? Yeah. And they tell you. And see, and, okay, let me say this. You take it for what you want. I just believe in being obedient. I'm still working on the speed limits. Because <laughs> that 450 horses, boy, I just, I said, calm down. Calm down, okay. I know, I know you only get out every six months, but. But uh, see, some of y'all been in the movie and they say turn your phone on, uh, put it on uh, silent, not vibrate, silent, because you can. That's irritating. And people still be. I'm like, see, see, I said I sure hope that it's the same, because that's the kind of stuff that'll block their blessings, because they're disobedient. Okay, I didn't mean to go around all of that, but. But, and then, you know, and, <laughs> and, and uh, while I'm on it, I'm out of well. And so, 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 so I know everybody, I know everybody got their Bible, this Bible on the phone, and I know people take their notes. But sometimes, you know, I'm preaching, right? I'm talking, right? I'm right. And, and I see somebody go, <laughs> I'm like, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> I didn't even say nothing. What's all that? Cause y'all think, you know, you think, I guess they think I'm stupid sometimes. I mean, not stupid, but they like, we well, you know, pastor, pastor, think I'm falling with him. <laughs> it is, I love you, you know, and you grown, you can do what you want to do. But I'm trying to help you move into excellence in your Christian life. And if all it takes is an iPhone, a Google phone, uh, 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 what's that other thing? Huh? 
Android, what I say, Google phone. Yeah. Android, if all it takes is the devil's like, all you gotta do is get them on the smartphone. That'll distract them. That's all it takes. I was watching an old uh, service of Pastor Price, and everybody was in there. Everybody was in there. You ain't see nobody looking up. You ain't see nobody. You ain't see none of that. Everybody. For an hour. They used to, we used to, it used to be like that here. I mean, one dude said, man, you, you, you come to your church, it's like being in class. I say, show sure no. Yeah. I say, you, you, you don't need a whole lot of inspiration. You can go get that anywhere. You can go watch Soul Train and get some of that. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you come here for information. Yeah. Somebody said, what's a Soul Train? Okay. Okay, you find 2 Corinthians chapter 4? You know, I'm talking about intimately, intimacy with God. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to say. And I, I, I know, man, it's, man, that's where we are. Now, on Wednesday, we were talking about in Romans chapter 12, it said, present yourself a living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice? Living, living sacrifice. And the sacrifice is, comes from the Old Testament where they would, um, they, they take animals and they would slay animals and blood sacrifices and, and that's how sins were atoned for and so on, so on and so forth. But God said, I want a living sacrifice. And the reason why he said living sacrifice, see a living sacrifice keep crawling off the altar. Yeah. So we'll be good for a while, and, but we'll crawl right off the altar. You ever crawled off the altar? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Debs. He crawled off the altar. <laughs> altar. No, I mean, we make come God, I ain't, ain't going to ever do this again. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Of course. And so that's why it's living. So you got to put, put yourself back on the altar. But God said, a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. I want, I want, I want you for myself. I want, I want you, I want you to own me and I want to own you. That's how you move into the perfect will of God. And again, he said, it's not, I don't, because some people find, and I said this too, a lot of times people find validation and they find, uh, 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 defined, they're defined by their jobs, defined by who they know, defined by what they drive, what, where they live, defined by who knows them and, and all of that. And, and that's okay. Well, no, it's not. But God said, I want you to be defined by your relationship with me. Why? Because those things change. And here's the scripture he gave me on this, is uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. He says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are what? Not seen. For the things which are seen are what? Temporary. They're what? Temporary. They're what? Temporary. Which means that they're subject to change. The things which are seen are, are eternal. So he says, see, all of that stuff that people put so much value in, that's subject to change. That's subject to change. How many of you have been on the job and then you just felt like, oh shoot, I'm retired. This job, it's gonna be, it's gonna be here forever. It's gonna be popping. It's gonna be good. And you don't even think about it being different. And they gave you three weeks notice, like, uh, by the way. Yeah. And so the problem with being defined by what I do, who I am, what I'm known by. What that the problem with that is is temporary, yeah. and here's the problem with it: the devil has access to everything that's seen. He has access to everything that's seen. So however good it is right now, it's good. But you need to know, especially when you start moving into God, you need to know you got an adversary that that will give you some supernatural opposition to stop you and to pull you off of that relationship. Yeah. Everything that's seen. Is temporal, but what's not seen is eternal. And God says, This relationship with me cannot be broken, it cannot be altered unless you decide. So, I want to ask you again what's the relationship? The devil wants to get us into religion, doing a bunch of stuff. Well, I go to church every Sunday. Well, that's good. The rats go to church too. <laughs> Y'all see any rats over here? Okay, good.
So God said, no, I, I want you. I want you. See, a lot of times people, I, I, I mentioned this Wednesday, I know some of this is going to seem like, but it's, it's a, I've seen, you know, this, I've been doing this for the last 20, what, 30 something years, and pastor, well, not pastor, but in church. And I've seen people, they're committed to their post. To their assignment, like they're usher, if they're singing, and they're committed to that. But the minute they pull away from the post, their commitment to God pulls away too. All of a sudden, they just come on Sunday and Wednesday. Now it's like, well, well, I ain't singing, so I don't need to. I ain't serving, so I don't need anybody. Okay, so it's probably just yeah. But no, I'm, I'm trying to help you because what happens is now you, so you're telling me what you were doing was the reason why you were committed. Because see, see, when, when you have a relationship with God, you don't, you don't, nobody has to beg you to do anything. No one have to, can, you know, keep calling, what, you know, keep calling. You won't have to do that. Your relationship with God pushes you. You listening to me? Your no relationship with God is like, no, I get to. I get to. I don't got to. I get to. And so that's what's so important is that's why the devil does anything he can to sever that union. Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, ask what you will. Because he said, I'm the vine, you are the what? The branches. The, the fruit grows on the branches, but there'll be no growth and bearing fruit if there's no connection. And a lot of people are trying to get the fruit of the gospel without the connection to the Father. And I know this is not, this is not, you know, it's not as popular now as it used to be because we majoring on forgiveness of sin instead of majoring on relationship. You get the relationship and you won't have to get forgiveness of sin very often. We still, you know, we still slip, but it won't be like, hey, some of the stuff is, just, I mean, well, anyway, I don't want to say that because I don't have time to. So here, here's, here's some things I said the other night. That relationship sustains you. It sustains you during, during the up times. It sustains you during the down times. See, when, when everything is working, you ever had those seasons when it's look like, man, everything you touch? Okay. Let me ask the rich side. This is the rich side over here, right? <laughs> Y'all remember having them seasons where it seemed like everything you tell you was thinking, there it is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Should I give him another shot? Y'all yeah. remember those times when, 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 when it just seemed like everything you just thought about is like, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's good. And, and we all have those seasons, right? We all have those seasons. But see, your relationship with God. Well, let me ask this question. Has it ever been, went so good? I mean, it was just good. You know, that's your happy dance. It's so good that you're just like, hey, whoo. And then the bottom fall out? Yeah. Yeah. But see, but here's the problem. Because you, you're more susceptible to messing up when it's high. See, when you're back against the wall, you say, what, what time is prayer? Is <laughs> <laughs> prayer today? What time? Shut up, I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. See, see, when you're back against the wall, you, pride just goes out the window. Right. Uh, I don't care who knows. I don't care who knows. I, I need some help. <laughs> but see, when, when everything is working, yeah. but see, here's the, here's the power of the relationship. The power of the relationship, it, it grounds you. And you don't get squirrely in the head. Like, look at me. The relationship grounds you. But when you're going through hell in a handbasket, the relationship sustains you and you say it's not going to always be like this God has an answer there's an answer with my name on it and you and see ah and when you when you when you have that relationship it's something remember that power on the inside that's working inside you that's that stuff that just won't let you quit 
I ain't quitting yet. I ain't quitting. No, no, there's another day. I just need another day. Give me one more day, Jesus. That power in you. And there's a, and you got an issue that it seems like, my God, seems like everything, okay, I got it here, then the thing move over here. You come over here, then move over here. And, but see, that relationship keeps you right there where you need to be. This, this relationship, this relationship, and I'm, I'm speaking from experience too, because I told y'all last week, oh, listen, you wouldn't even want, you don't even want to know. If I didn't have a relationship with God, remember I was talking, I don't know what service no. If my, if my value and stuff came from me just being a preacher, I'd have quit. I'm like, I don't need to be putting up with all these cousins like this. <laughs> really, I'm like, you know, I, I got some skills. <laughs> and you know, I, but, but, but my relationship, see, what I do is secondary. Really, what I do is second. I do a lot of other things y'all don't even know about because because that's because of who I am in my relationship. But but what this here this here is wonderful, and I wouldn't want to be doing anything else. Right, right, you know, not right now. I don't want to be doing anything else. But but this is secondary to my relationship. With hit this relationship, I feel like with God and with her. Shh. Unstoppable. But the minute I start smelling myself, <laughs> no, really, and, and you too. You start thinking, I'm wonderful, I'm awesome, I'm a man, I'm a woman. Oh. You start thinking that, and you start thinking, and you start pushing God out the way, and you start thinking how awesome and wonderful. Well, you know, I, I got, I got this, I got this training. Well, you can't put in God. You can't pull out what God didn't put in. So everything good thing you have starts with Him, and that's why we sing them song, Lord. I just wanna thank you forever. Yeah. Why? Because, because. No, because, God, I'm acknowledging you. That's why I love to sing to her. I'm acknowledging this relationship. Thank you. Okay. Let me see why I need to cut this off. How y'all doing? Good. All right, let's see. Did y'all get my message? Yes. Okay, so I can, I can share it down. Well, see, that's the problem. <laughs> you know, you know, you, anyway, I got to think about that. That's what I, I see why Paul said, you know, uh, put away lying. <laughs> he said in all his, just about all his letters. Because, see, when you got a relationship with God, I, you know, that's my grandson right there. And I learned from him. <laughs> he teaches me stuff. And so I would say, I would say, Baba Faith. And he said, yeah, what? I said, uh, okay, we've been outside for four hours. Can we go inside now? <laughs> you know, he, I give him the wrong stuff. I give him the wrong toys. I, I, he got a bubble machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I said, I said we, okay, we've been outside four hours. The, the uh, mosquito repellent wore off. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, anyway, I said, so I asked him, I asked him and, and I said, God, I need to be like that. I said, you ready to go inside? You want to go inside, don't you? No. <laughs> and that's it. No explanation. No, no. Oh, well, you know, I think we can stay. No. You want to go inside? No. <laughs> See, we need to be like that. <laughs> you coming to dinner? No. That's it. That's it. You coming to my Tupperware party? No. <laughs> you know, just be done with it. But we won't sit there. Well, you know, I was thinking about so I got so much to do, and I'm not really sure. I just, hush all that. No, no. That's it. The next time you, the next time you try to weasel out of something, watch the stuff you come up with. No, just be like, Bob. no. Mm. Do you want to go? No. Why not? I said no. No. And then he'll, he'll make a song out of it. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, let me stop. <laughs> the 
the relationship. I'm gonna close with this. I I, I may mention this Sunday, uh, Wednesday night. You all remember when David uh, came out? He would get ready to go fight Goliath, and uh, Saul. They tried to put this armor on him, and uh, David said he tried it on out of respect. He says, hey, "This this stuff ain't proven." What do you mean ain't proven? He's like, "You need you see who you gonna fight?" He's like, and he said, "Uh, uh boss man, I." I slew a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philippine, he doesn't have a covenant with God. I got a relationship with God. Uh huh. I have a relationship with God. See, see, he had to tell them that he slew a lion and a bear. They didn't know. You know why? Because. Oh, I'm going to try to hold, 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 hold. Because in the secret areas of your life, those victories you get when nobody else is watching, you know you want to pick up that phone that boy was calling. Okay. <laughs> in those secret areas of your life where nobody else knows, we all have them. Those secret areas where you're like, man, I sure want to, I sure want to compromise right here. But when you get that victory that nobody sees, because see, they say you so they say you're the saint of God, you're the holy saint of God. Well, the holiest saints of God have battles. Yes, sir. All right, girl, you just clap loud. <laughs> but no, we 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 do. And every victory you get, God, when you have a relationship with God, God is like, and He said, what? What you do in secret, he reward you how? That's why you can't be sweating. I mean, getting upset about people and you see them, you see, God, dog, it seemed like everything just worked for them. Look at, look at how God, but no, no. David had to tell them. See, a lot of us want to wait till the grandstands are full of people before we start something. Yeah, I need somebody to see me doing this. I can't go over there and watch the kid. Can't nobody see me over there. I can't go down to the to the uh, 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 transitional housing and spend time with these people. Ain't nobody gonna see me down there. I need a platform, Pastor. I need folks to see what I'm doing. They need to see my skills. No, what you do in private, David. Within well, them, them silent years of life, silent to people. Even his dad and them didn't even know. But silent to people. But open before, open before God. I'm telling you, when you cross that threshold, you won't care what folks think, cause you know you'll be smiling on the inside. <laughs> Boy, if that fool on in the new. I mean, not fool. <laughs> but sometimes people act like fools. And they just don't know. They don't know. Uh, they just sing the song, you don't know the cost for the oil. There was some crushing and some squeezing uh, and some pressure and, and there was some tears watering it. But you don't know the cost because you weren't there. I want to encourage you. Let God work you in those secret areas of your life. You know, I remember, I heard this a long time ago. Um, you guys said, you know, that's why you always need to keep your, those unsupervised areas of your life, you know, work on and keep them straight. A lot of people, their closet, the stuff is just all everywhere. Because nobody gets to go in there. No, you stay on this floor right here. You ever have people come to your house? No, you stay right here. You can't go on my dog. You can't. But see, it's the unsupervised areas of your life. Like right now, I'm supervised. So you know, I'm on my best behavior. The best I can do. <laughs> I'm on my best behavior. But then what about those secret areas where you by yourself? What about, you know, you go out of town, nobody knows you. You just walk in the liquor store like it ain't nothing. Yeah, give me, give me two of them. But here you're like, hey, 
Levita. But the supervisor, the, the God wants intimate relationship. The intimacy is what causes. It's more important than anything you can do for him. He he doesn't. Uh, you should do something. You will do something. But don't put a priority on that. Put a priority on how he receives you and how he feels about it. All right. It's all about the relationship with him. It's all about that. All about that relationship. Father, I thank you. Thank you so much for your loving kindness, for your perseverance, for your long suffering with me and all my cousins. We all need your mercy, Lord. Thank you for not, my God, thank you for not holding you're not holding anything against us all you want is a relationship so father i pray right now i pray right now over this group if you have uh if you're in a relationship with people that's pulling you away from your intimacy with god you need to you need to dtr that thing define that relationship and i, I said this wednesday night you don't want to be hooking up with somebody that's not. If you are living sacrifice, you're like, God, I'm totally into you. You don't want to hook up with somebody that's thinking about it. Because it's, 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 that's unequally yoked. It's, it's, it would be a drag. So I want to encourage you right now to make the adjustment. Just at least, at least start in the direction. Make God a priority in your life. Make the word of God a priority. Do, do what you do, but, but don't be so tied to it that you get, your, you get your validation from something other than God. So let's just let him do that. Can I lead you in a prayer? i lead you in a prayer of, of a adjustment, correction. I pray this with me because this is the thing God wants to do in our lives. I, I'm convinced. I know the world is going crazy, sin is abound, but God's like, they ain't got nothing on me. I'm going to show them, they're going to shake their head like, man, God, how did that happen? God, say this with me. Father, in Jesus' name, help me develop my intimacy with you. I ask you to forgive me where I've been negligent. And help me make the correction. Now I just I just heard him say that I don't know who who, who I'm talking to, but there's some of you here, you just can't get happy. You're irritable. You just can't you just can't you just the spirit of contentment. And contentment happens in spite of circumstances until circumstances change. But you just can't, you're just irritable. You, I said earlier, just, just mean. And God says, because you're hurting. You're hurting. And I said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. I have a rest for you. And that rest for you will create rest for those around you. That people don't even want to be around you now. Because you're so toxic. They love you, but they can't stand you. And that happens when your spirit is agitated. My God. Some of you need just go on a, go on a fast, go on a, uh, a phone fast, TV, whatever. And recalibrate, calibrate your heart. Some of you, it used to be that way, and God is like, yeah, calibrate it, come on. If there's stress, strain, and struggle, that's an indication that the intimacy is lacking. So, my God, there's some people just working way too much. And you say, if I just get here, I will achieve this, and this will be my answer. No, and it'll, it'll move, that target will move as soon as you get there. It'll be something else. So God is speaking to you. He said, I'm your, I am your peace. 
I am your peace. You're accepted with me. You don't have to compromise and jump through hoops so people can say, okay, now you can be. No. The rules keep changing out here. They keep changing. So, Father, I pray now for everyone listening to me that they would also, that there's a hunger, thirst, and desire develop for that intimacy. My God, I don't know how to say it, but that they will hit that sweet spot in God where they just don't give a rip <laughs> what I mean all that matters is having that wholeness in Jesus mighty name my God I feel the Holy Ghost y'all I want you to just just I want you to you know, this is for you I want you to be honest with yourself as you leave here like yeah yeah none of us are doing it perfectly but at least let's start out that way and come out here on Wednesday nights and and I, I kind of got into it a lot more God wants us he wants us now while every head bowed if you here today and you say pastor I'm not a Christian I I want to be a Christian and and basically what I was talking about, I was pretty much talking to Christians who have made those decisions. But if you hear you never committed your life to Jesus, I'm going to talk about this on, on one of the Wednesdays that the scripture said, God said, I will, Paul said, you will keep that what I committed to you. See, there's some things you commit to God, he'll energize you to walk him out. But you got to come to intimately, look, God, I'm having struggle I'm struggling with this but I commit to turn this around to you and God will commit it well if you're here today and you're not born again you're like Lord I want to commit my life to you when well, God can help you keep what you commit to him so if you're here today I want to advise you and counsel you and ask you commit your life to him